Hey guys, what's going on? Watomar Melon here, and today I'm going to be bringing you uh, an updated version of my best card sleeves, binders, uh, basically the best way to store your Yu-Gi-Oh card collection. Um, and everything in this video, every product shown in this video is going to be um, linked in the description below. And these links are affiliate links. So if you end up buying anything from either eBay or Amazon within uh, 24 hours of clicking the link. So if you click that eBay link and you buy anything on eBay, not just what it links to within 24 hours, uh, that will actually support the channel. So I just want to let you know that that is always appreciated when you do this. Um, but there are two parts uh, to this video. Basically, the first part is going to be card sleeves and the second part are, is going to be card binders. I don't have any affiliations with any of the companies um, whose products are shown in this video. This is just my honest opinion. Uh, on the best stuff. So without further ado, let's get into it. So I'm going to start off with card sleeves, and we're going to start off with a specific card. We're going to be looking at the Summoned Skull. So Summoned Skull, iconic card, here you go. This is out of Metal Raiders. And my first recommendation for a card sleeve uh, is actually the card sleeve that this is in. And this is going to be for budget collectors. I still use these card sleeves in some of my binders. Um, and, you know, I'm someone with even the highest end card sleeves, I have tons of them. Um, and I still choose to use these things because they are very clear. They show off the card artwork quite nicely. Um, so without further ado, they're just the Konami sleeves. They have a ton of different designs. I've had problems with Konami in the past, but one of the best things they've been doing recently is printing a ton of these card sleeves with tons of different designs. You can find them for pretty cheap. You know, it usually runs you about $5.00. Uh, for a pack of, I believe, 50 of these sleeves. Um, and so if you just look at the card in and out of the sleeve, you can see that it doesn't really detract from the appearance of the card all that much. Um, now, I'm not recommending these sleeves for actually playing the trading card game, but they are quite nice for collecting because they don't, you know, really obstruct viewing the, the card artwork all that much. So this is my pick for... Um, best budget sleeve, although honestly, these are great card sleeves. The one downside that they do have is that they're very thin. This is an advantage in some situations, which is the reason I sometimes still use them. Um, actually, they have two. The other thing is that they're not good for double sleeving. So if you want to put this sleeve inside of a larger standard size card sleeve, um, it doesn't work very well because these are a little bit larger than most Japanese card sleeves. So they don't fit snugly inside of uh, the standard card sleeve. It kind of just still hangs out a little bit and it doesn't look particularly good. But back to the other drawback of it being thin, this is an advantage in some situations because a lot of binders are not meant to hold uh, card sleeves at all, which is kind of bizarre because most people use them nowadays uh, to protect their cards. But it's bizarre also in the sense that, you know, a lot of binders, if you do put a card in a card sleeve and the card sleeve is even remotely thick, it will leave an imprint on the binder. And I actually have a binder right here um, that this has happened to. And you can see that it really detracts from the appearance of the binder. So if we go inside of this thing and we look at, uh, let me, yeah, you can see it. Uh, if you look at one of these pages, there's kind of an imprint where the card was inside of the card sleeve. It kind of looks like a dusty layer that goes around the rectangle of where the card was. And those will appear from the plastic inside of your binder stretching. Obviously, you don't want that to happen. So um, the best thing you can do is use thin card sleeves and binders where that is prone to happen. The problem is it doesn't protect your card as well, so you have to be careful when handling them. This is not going to provide a whole lot of protection for your card. Uh, you know, it's not going to damage your card in any way, but if you're not careful with it, you can still easily bend it. Um, or, you know, if you press your nail into it, it's going to leave an indent. Whereas with some of the more premium card sleeves, that won't be a problem. Okay, so, you know, if we look at this card in this card sleeve, it looks quite nice. My recommendation for a premium card sleeve, it's not going to surprise people who have been collecting for a long time, but it's Dragon Shield Inners and Outers. Um, obviously, these cost a bit more. Usually, the inners are going to run you, I think, probably around $8 to $10 for a pack of, uh, I think it's 60 of them. And so it's a bit more expensive than the Konami card sleeve, um, 
but they are much thicker. So if you have a binder that can hold thicker card sleeves and you put it inside of it, it looks quite nice, as you can see. Still very, very clear. And it's thicker, so it protects the cards better. That's essentially the main advantage. Besides uh, the outer sleeve, which can actually fit the inner sleeve quite snugly and tightly. So if you have an expensive card that you want a double sleeve, um, you know, once it's inside of the double sleeve, it's very well protected. And unless you're really trying to bend it in half, it's not going to damage the card at all. Um, but, you know, it fits snugly and tightly. It looks quite nice inside of the double sleeve. So it is a more premium option than the just standard Konami card sleeve. But, you know, the outer is also going to cost, I think, you can get a hundred of them for around $10. Um, so, you know, you have to use, well, you don't have to use the outer, but, you know, if you're using this premium card sleeve, I think one of the huge advantages is that you, you can actually double sleeve and it still looks quite good uh, inside of the double sleeve. It doesn't really detract from the card art very much at all. And it's very, very well protected. So Dragon Shield card sleeves, uh, these are the Dragon Shield clear card sleeves. Um, you don't want to get the non-glare ones because the non-glare ones, I can actually show you. I don't have a non-glare dragon shield on me, but I have a different non-glare card sleeve. And so if we put the summon skull, look at, you know, how nice the foil pops on the card sleeve or on the card, excuse me. And then when you put it inside of the non-glare card sleeve, it just kind of, you know, it doesn't pop very much at all. It's much more muted. Um, so, you know, I don't think that these are optimal for collecting. They're a little bit better if you're trying to play and you want to see the, the card text without a huge amount of glare. But I think in most cases, you're going to want to just go with uh, a regular clear card sleeve. And the Konami ones are at a great price. So that's all I have to say on card sleeves. Links in the description to those. Um, but that is only half the video. The rest of the video is going to be talking about binders. Um, so if you're looking for a budget option, there is a binder that I don't think it's a good binder. It's not like the budget option for card sleeves. The Konami card sleeves are quite good, um, but they have these duelist portfolios as well, which are really, really cheap. Like this thing costs, I believe, $10. Um, so, you know, it's not expensive at all. You can get it for $10 to $12 on Amazon except it's not actually that good of a binder. It does have, you know, the bare minimum in terms of industry standards. It's side loading, meaning that if I put a card inside of it, so let's put our summon skull inside of this thing, and I tilt it up like so, or I tilt it back like so, it's not going to fall out of the car, out of the binder, excuse me, which is nice. You know, that is the industry standard, but, you know, sometimes you do find things that are top loading, which is not, not a good idea. So this binder, I believe, can hold 180 cards, um, which isn't bad in terms of binder capacity. And the plastic is not quite good. It is a bit translucent, so it does, you know, prevent you from seeing the card artwork uh, a little bit, but it's not as bad as the, the non-glare sleeves. This is more so if you're just trying to start a, a collection with very little money. So if, you know, you're putting $50 into your collection. There's nothing wrong with that. Um, everyone has a different number for what they're willing to spend on these cards. You know, they're just pieces of cardboard at the end of the day. But, you know, you don't want to spend $30 on a binder if you only have $50 to spend on cards. Uh, because, you know, another 5 or $10 is going to go into card sleeves, and then you're left with basically nothing to buy the actual cards. So this is something if you're trying to start cards, uh, collecting cards on a pretty low amount of, of cash. So that's what I would recommend. Not good, but it's not, you know, bad. It's going to help protect your cards and they're going to display quite nicely. The one I forgot to mention, one other thing, this is a binder, despite being made by Konami, it doesn't actually fit the Konami card sleeves all that well. You can see that the summon skull inside of the card sleeve inside of the binder, it moves past uh, the halfway points between the two pockets, meaning that if you have a card inside of this one and a card inside of this one, it's going to overlap a little bit. I can actually try and demonstrate that. All right, so we have another, we have a Destiny board right here. And so if we put that in another Konami card sleeve, we can see, where's the opening of this thing? Okay. Put it in like so. 
looks great inside of that sleeve. We put it inside of the binder, or we try to put it inside the binder. One, it's hard to put it inside the binder because the summon skull is taking up more than its fair share of the space. So we get it inside, you know, we slide it in, and it's very, very tight. It's hard. Some of the, I don't know if you can see it that well, but the cards are slightly coming out of the pocket. It's not the worst thing. As you can see, you know, you can push down the other card to try and slide the other one in. But my point is just that this binder is not made with card sleeves in mind, despite the fact that it's made by Konami, which produces these card sleeves. These binders are more made for uh, cards without card sleeves, as you can see. Fits very nicely without a card sleeve. Um, but, you know, you are going to want to put card sleeves on your cards before putting them in the binders because they're going to scratch if you don't. Um, also, you know, your corners can get nicked. All kinds of things can happen. So it's better to just put them inside of card sleeves and then pick another binder. So that's the budget option. Um, the next option is going to be the high-end, more premium option. There are actually two out there. And the reason I do two uh, is because the first one is from Dragon Shield again. This is the one I use for my most expensive cards. Um, the reason being that it holds the double-sleeved sleeved, thick Dragon Shields quite well. Um, this is the Dragon Shield Codex uh, Zipster. And uh, I don't know if I can zoom out very well, but give you more of an idea for what this thing looks like, but um, it has a quite nice exterior. It's very professional looking, uh, but if we go back down again, the one thing is that it is very expensive. Um, you have to buy this binder, which is very hard to find. I think I could only find the Excel when I tried to do a little research on the prices before I made this video. Um, and the Excel, instead of holding sheets that have three cards by three cards, uh, they hold four by four, which the reason you typically use three by three for Yu-Gi-Oh! is because uh, you can only play three of a single card inside of um, the Yu-Gi-Oh! trading card game. At the end of the day, it doesn't really matter. You can put your cards in whatever binder you want, but these card sheets are also sold separately for like 25 to $30. You want to get the clear ones or else you're going to run into the same problem you did with card sleeves, where the non-glare ones um, really hold back the card art and the colors um, of the card, as well as the foiling. The foiling is actually the biggest part. So these binders can hold those double sleeved sleeve dragon shields. It's nice because there's a zit, or, uh, excuse me, a binder trap keeper. What am I trying to say? A ring. That's the word. Um, because the ring allows you to sort of, you know, say I have two cards inside of this sheet and I want, or one card inside of this sheet and another card on another sheet and I want to switch the orders of the sheets. Actually say there were cards in every slot on this page and then on every card on this page. If I used a different binder that didn't have rings, I'd have to take all the cards out of the pages if I wanted to flip the order of the pages. Whereas with these rings, you can just obviously, you know, open the ring, switch the position of the pages themselves. Additionally, if you use a uh, binder without rings, you are going to run into the problem where, you know, I wash my hands before handling these cards. However, if, you know, even if I wash my hands, there's still going to be some amount of oil on them. And over time, as you handle the binder pages, they're going to get, you know, dirt, oil, all that sort of stuff on them, regardless of how careful you are with handling and cleanliness before handling of these cards and binder pages. So they're going to accrue like disgustingness. And so you're going to want to replace that because you're trying to display them nicely. And so even a high quality binder, if it doesn't have these pages, which you can just replace, you're going to run into some issues because the pages themselves are just going to get dirty. So that's why I like being able to exchange the pages. The downside, I guess, is that these rings, uh, O-ring binders, which these binders are not, can damage your cards. These are D-ring binders, meaning that, um, as you can see, this part right here, let me turn it over so you can see, it's straight rather than curved, whereas this half is curved. The reason that that works well is because the, the pages all lie uh, essentially parallel to each other. Um, and there's not any, you know, if I flip the pages to the other side, you can 
kind of see, there aren't many pages in here, but the pages don't lie parallel to each other in the same way. They kind of curve up and down, which isn't nice. Uh, you don't want that curvature because then your cards, when you if you close it up, they can get stuck underneath the, the actual ring if it was an O-ring binder, which this is not, so it's not going to damage your cards. Some people are, you know, a bit paranoid or they just don't want to deal with that happening at all, so they don't buy ring binders. This is definitely the best ring binder, but it's expensive. Um, that's the main problem. But Dragon Shield is the gold standard for any trading card game supplies, so uh, I like them the most. The other thing that I would recommend, um, I guess there is one downside to Dragon Shield. It's expensive, and also it's hard to find because they're made in the Netherlands and they're made in small, small quantity. Dragon Shield is not a huge company, so they can't produce as many of these uh, as there is demand. And so oftentimes you're not going to be able to find them. And when you do find them, they're going to be marked up <laughs> like huge amounts because, um, you know, there just hasn't been a shipment recently. And so there are only a couple of them on the market. And people know that they're already premium binders. The people who are buying those things are willing to spend a lot of money. And so they mark them up and you sometimes are going to be spending... $50 for just the binder itself, sometimes even more than that. That doesn't include the pages, which usually are not as difficult to get. All right, the final thing I will recommend uh, as an alternative to the Dragon Shield is the Top Tech binder. This doesn't have any rings, so it does run into those issues that I said, although some people don't like rings. Top Deck is American made, so you can find it more easily uh, online. It's basically always in stock. And as you can see, you know, the... Um, what am I looking for? The logo for Top Deck actually has the Yu-Gi-Oh card back from the show where it has that, you know, oval shape on the back. So these binders were definitely made with Yu-Gi-Oh in mind. Oftentimes you run into, most companies are making them primarily for um, magic and Pokemon card collecting. So the interior, not quite as nice uh, on these first couple of pages. It's not super premium, but the binder sheets are the best in the business. Um, I wish, you know, these binder sheets were available um, with hole punches so I could put them in my Dragon Shield binder because they're so clear. You can see every detail of the cards. The problem with these sheets is that they don't hold double sleeves, so I can't put my double sleeve Dragon Shield, but you can see the, how clear they actually are. Um, you can see basically every detail on every card when you have these sheets in, and, you know, this is not like a compromise, uh, you know, if you can't get your hands on a Dragon Shield for a reasonable price, you're not compromising very much, if at all, when you buy the top deck. It's really a nice, nice binder. This is about as good as you're get, gonna get in terms of quality, and being that it's made in America, if you're in North America, it's much, much easier to get than drag, Dragon Shield stuff. So this runs you about $45, but it's a really, really nice binder. It holds a ton of cards. There's an 1,000 card version of this as well, which I wouldn't recommend because, you know, unless you have that many cards that need to be put into a binder. Also, you run into an issue. I'll show you, I forgot to mention this. There is this other problem that when you flip all the way to the other side, you can notice that they start to not lie flat. And so when you have cards in here, there's obviously greater thickness to these pages and you start building sort of a pocket where the, the sheets will slip up like this because they won't have enough room to fall flat. Um, and I don't think that will damage your cards, but it always makes me paranoid. So that is my review of binders and card sleeves. Let me know what you guys think. I tried to make it as in depth as possible. Um, I'll try to cut out some of this so it's more enjoyable to watch, but if you guys did enjoy, make sure to click the links in the description below. It will help out the channel significantly, but it's been your boy Watomar Melon, and peace out.